KU. A 5'11 junior from Cold Spring, Kentucky, number 21, Christy Frempen. A six foot senior from Cloverdale, Ohio, number 22, Linda Honingford. A 5'10 sophomore from Fort Recovery, Ohio, number 23, Valerie Garkey. A 5'11 senior from Springfield, Ohio, number 25, Holly Kaufman. And a 5'8 sophomore from Fort Jackson, South Carolina, number 32, Annie Levens. The head coach for Northern Kentucky is Nancy Winstall. She's assisted by Flora Fields, Natalie Oakes, and Melissa Fleming. And now for your IPFW Lady Dons. Currently in third place in the GLVC, 10 and four in the conference, 18 and six overall. At one guard, a 5'7 sophomore from Grable, Indiana, number 23, Amy Newhauser. The other guard, a 5'9 sophomore from Fort Wayne, Indiana, number 24, Lisa Miller. At one forward, a 5'9 sophomore from Huntington, Indiana, number 35, Shelly Sands. The other forward, a 5'9 junior from Somerville, Indiana, number 45, Robin Scott. And at center, the 5'10 senior from Kokomo, Indiana, number 22, Tina Merrill. IPFW is coached by Terry Rosinski. She is assisted by Bill Carter. The officials for tonight's GLVC contest are Joe Gilliland and Kent Smith. Good evening and welcome to the IPFW Athletic Center as we are about to have the tip off for tonight's first game, the Great Lakes Valley Conference basketball contest between the University of Northern Kentucky and IPFW. And Northern Kentucky controls the tap and comes down with the first offensive possession. Number 32 with the ball, Amy Levens for the Northern Kentucky Norse ladies. Then the Honigford from over here nearby Ohio. Hits the first jump shot for Northern Kentucky and Linda gives a two-point lead. Looks like Northern Kentucky is going to apply a little full court pressure similar to IPFW, Dan, to um, make it difficult to get the ball up, up the floor tonight. Dave, I think this game is going to have a lot of similarities to the game against Bellarmine the other night and the fact that there will be a revenge factor. Nice pass inside by uh, Robin Scott to Shelly Sands who puts it in. Only it's going to be a reversal of uh, the other night. We had lost to Bellarmine down there, and uh, so we had the revenge factor in our mind. We beat Northern Kentucky down there that same weekend, so they've got the revenge factor in their mind. And all three teams, it's a very important weekend for IPFW. All three teams still vying for uh, NCAA tournament bids. Inside with the ball, number 25 has it tipped away as Holly Kaufman got uh, stopped on her attempt to shoot to the basket. Out quickly, Amy Newhauser in quickly to uh, Lisa Miller. Three-pointer on its way. Gets good by Tina Merrill. Great play at both ends of the court by Lisa Miller. She got the rebound defensively at the one end, went to the other end, got the ball inside, and fed back out for the facing shot for Tina Merrill for the three-point play. Yeah, she pulled all the defense in on her in the uh, lane and kicked it back out to Tina, who was wide open for the jumper. A good inside move that time, and we see uh, what looked like it might have been a tie-up, and Lisa Miller Goes back up for the rebound and is fouled by number 32, Annie Levens. Boy, Dave, she's got, Lisa's got three rebounds here in the first uh, one minute and a half. She looks hungry, doesn't she? Yes. It? Again, the full court pressure. Looks like it's more an attempt to uh, just keep you from getting the ball down quickly, although Shelly Sands wide open at the baseline, goes up and in. Nice move by Shelly. Well, she saw the opening. The Ball got the before the, past the first line of defense and she was able to take it right to the basket. A 
Levens and Kaufman in the lineup for Northern Kentucky. Garkey. Back outside with Levens at the ball, setting up inside to Huntingford, and Huntingford hits her second basket of the evening. Dave, if she gets the ball down low, she's going to post up, take it right to the basket. They've got to deny her the ball, and Robin Scott, I think, is on her and will typically do a very good job cutting off the passing lane. Well, Linda is a, a good ball player. She's from, as I said, nearby Ohio over here. Uh, her, her hometown is the same hometown of, as uh, very close to where a couple of our former ball players had come from uh, in Ohio. Tina Merrill with the shot fake outside and goes back up. And we see the rebound pulled down by Christy Freppen of the NKU. Honingford outside this time. And a long jump shot is good by Holly Kaufman. Makes the score 7 6. IPFW in the lead. Lisa Miller with the ball and quickly down the floor. Nice spin move inside and for a great layup. You're right, Dave. I think she looks hungry. She didn't have a good scoring night the other night. We thought she played a pretty good all around ball game, but she uh, is obviously very hungry tonight. These kids, I think, realize the importance of these uh, next four ball games. Kaufman outside with the, the pass to number 21, Kreppen. And and the rebound pulled down by Levens. She's out front, hoping to get something set up here for Northern Kentucky. And again, the short uh, jump shot by Holly Kaufman. Amy Newhauser down with the ball quickly. Amy looks right to Lisa Miller. Lisa's jump shot is good. Dave, that's what Lisa did not do the other night. She did not hit that 15-foot facing shot, and uh, tonight she took it right away, got some confidence, and she's hit two in a row now, one from a distance and a good move inside. Now, Thursday night, she might have attempted a drive on that uh, possession rather than to pull up and take that short jumper. Huntingford again with a jumper to the right side of the lane. Shelly Sands that time with a little careless pass, uh, trying to make the pass across the body. Jump shot by Robin Scott is good from the free throw line. And IBFW jumping out to a five point lead here early, 13 to 8. Val Garkey with the ball over to Christy Freppen. And back to Val Garkey, who was left open back inside. We got lucky that time. The right. ball bounced away from Northern Kentucky, and Amy Newhauser now quickly down. Somebody better stay back or there'll be a fast break going the other way. Robin Scott wide open, cash is in. Well, you were right, Dave, about luck down at the other end. IPFW is not doing a real good job of boxing out right now. They have gotten a number of rebounds just on sheer aggressiveness, but they've got to, to find their, the person they're guarding and actually hold their position, and they're not doing a good job of that right now. Right. Good timeout by uh, Northern Kentucky, I believe. They've uh, fallen down by seven, and again, they know, they know the importance of these ball games. They trail IPFW by half a game in the conference. And uh, it appears it's going to be a two-team race for the first and second place. So third place may be the key for an NCAA bid, and uh, these teams are both vying for that place. Could very well be. IPFW is shooting the ball very well at the moment. Uh, I think they've uh, scored their last four times down the floor. And well, I can only remember one miss, so you're right. The percentages are very good. Dave, this, this looks like it's going to be an interesting matchup. It appears that Northern Kentucky's bigger across the front line than we are. Um, but we run in nine players that play over 10 minutes a game. So I hope that uh, I think we'll see uh, a strategy of us trying to play a lot of players and, and wear their big people down in particular and see if that makes a, a and difference. The, the depth could be a, a factor here because we know we'll have some people coming in. We'll see how uh, Northern Kentucky plays it uh, during the course of the evening. Northern Kentucky also a little bit older and more mature. Two of their leading players are seniors, and they'll lose those this year, where IPFW is still a very young ball club. Northern Kentucky on the attack now, offensively. They move the ball pretty quickly around the perimeter and then occasionally look to either the baseline or the inside, and that time when they get the baseline move from Annie Levens, 
who scores the basket. Northern Kentucky with a pretty tight man to man defense. They uh, do not give you a lot of daylight here. And it looks like some scuffling uh, in the exchange on the pick. Well, right now, Dave, I, uh, excuse me, Northern Kentucky is playing a better defensive game. They're, uh, they're playing a very strong, very tight man to man defense, and it's causing IPFW some problems. IPFW is hitting a phenomenal shooting percentage. Not and sure there. what happened there. I well, guess the, uh, one official put the ball in play before uh, the replacement had had a chance to get off the floor, and so the other official stopped play. And that substitution is Don Harbaugh, who has the ball at the moment. Looks off to Lisa Miller on the left, far left side. And that time we got a shot fake, and Lisa knows that she raised that foot before uh, she put the ball on the floor. And Levens with the ball. Holly Kaufman staying back to help. Val Garkey. There we have Linda Honingford way out. That's where I'd like to have her yes, have the all ball. Night long. <laughs> because she is a very good, a very talented player inside. Nice move to the baseline that time. Uh, fortunately, she had to take a tough shot. It's good defense. And very good box out by Lisa Miller. I just uh, commented that IPFW wasn't doing a good job that way. A little lackadaisical pass by Don Harbaugh there. Yeah, she made up her mind what she's going to do with the ball without taking into account where the defense was. Judy Guest into the lineup, placing Tina Merrill. IPFW with 15-10 lead. 13 and a half minutes to be played yet here in the first half. Judy might have had a drive down the lane if she'd have kept going on that possession. Back out to the top to Shelly Sands. And we're going to have a foul called underneath against number 23, Val Garkey. Third team foul against uh, the Lady Norse. Fourth team foul. Well, and they appear to play a pretty aggressive defense, Dave, which means they're probably going to pick up a few of those fouls. IPFW on the offensive attack. Nine seconds on the shot clock. Nice move down the lane by Robin Scott. We will see whether or not the basket will count. I think it might. Uh, the one official's waving it off, I think, so. And there's Again, been no signal, so no I signal no one basket. way or the other. I thought the whistle again was sounded after the shot was in the air. So well, and then the contact looked like it came well after the shot. But uh, maybe we can get a replay of that after a while and see what kind of action really took place. In the meantime, the call was made. The basket was not good, and uh, Northern Kentucky with a substitution into the lineup now, number 33, Lori McClellan. And there we had uh, a drive to the basket by number 23, Val Garkey. So Northern Kentucky has whittled that lead down now. Trail only by three, 15-12. Pass inside with Judy Guest getting a little over anxious that time. Saw the opening, but didn't quite get a pass inside that could be handled. Well, that appears to be IPFW's problem on both ends of the court. Even defensively, the, the people playing out high are playing just a little too tight and letting their man uh, beat them around and get in the inside step. And that's about three or four times, and they're not getting good backside help at this point. So that we have Tina Merrill back into the lineup. Annie Levens being guarded closely. There we had a reach in slap foul by Amy uh, Newhauser. And we have Pam Edwards checking into the IPFW lineup to give Robin Scott a short rest here. Like NKU would like to have an out of bounds play on the far sideline, but uh, IPFW is dropping back into a zone defense, so not much can materialize out of that set. I think the officials gave the ball a little deeper in the corner than they wanted it to. 
There was one of those cases where the ball was loose. IPFW could have had it and didn't realize where it was and finally come up with the ball. Well, Here we come down quickly. Pam Edwards real aggressive getting that ball though and she did it at a real nice job at the end of the Bellarmine game tonight doing that so. Couldn't quite get the handle on the ball inside. Nice pass dropped inside that time but IPFW turns the ball over. Plays pretty loose on both ends here. A little ragged right now. Well, maybe a good choice that time, especially a good choice when uh, we have the chance to go back inside and we get the basket by Pam Edwards. That was good recognition by Don Harbaugh. And Levens with the ball. High pick by Linda Honigford and in a dish off to uh, Right back to Linda Honigford as she almost a give and go. <clears throat> she was fouled coming down the lane before she was able to shoot. We have a 17 12 score. IPFW in the lead in a uh, hard fought game here so far, Dan, for these first nine minutes of play. Well, both teams trying to feel each other out, I think, Dave. It's nobody's really gotten into uh, a real rhythm yet. <laughs> Fairly well matched teams. Interesting out of bounds play there that the Northern Kentucky could have been called for a moving pick, it looked like. But well, that was one of those where Annie Levin got caught in heavy traffic, and when in doubt, she had no choice but to just throw it up. And that was very good defense by IPFW. Just held their ground in the middle there. Yes, it was. And uh, didn't jump, didn't slap hands. Nice give and go uh, passing there by Robin Scott and Tina Merrill. No basket, but it was a good. Uh, don't believe Robin was quite ready for a possible flip back that time, and it glanced off of her arm. So Northern Kentucky will inbound the ball underneath their own basket with 23 seconds on the shot clock. And a quick jump shot taken from the right side. Bounds around, no good. Tina Merrill comes up with the ball. And Don Harbaugh out quickly. Finds Robin Scott down the left side. Good defense by uh, Northern Kentucky. They really make it tough on you to uh, get a pass and get an offensive set going. Robin Scott with a quick step to the baseline though uh, beat the defensive player and uh, was able to draw the foul. That's about the only option available to her That's that right. time too because everybody was covered very very tightly. Tina Manier into the game now for Don Harbaugh. And number 25 for Northern Kentucky, Holly Kaufman coming back into the lineup as Christy Freppen gets a rest. I think Northern Kentucky has uh, used only one substitution, number 33. She's come in for a couple of different people to give them a rest. PFW got trapped down on the right side baseline that time, and there we have a foul being called against number 23, Val Garkey. That's her second, Dave. And very soon now, IPFW will be in the bonus on the free throw shooting contest, as that was number six foul against Northern Kentucky. And against Bellarmine on Thursday night, IPFW at 27 out of 28 free throws, so very important statistic. This IPFW game. is not the kind of team you want to put at the free throw line. Nice pass across to uh, from Lisa Miller to Judy Guess, and Judy didn't look like uh, she was quite ready to get the ball. A little surprise and put it hard off the glass. Well, you mentioned that twice about a couple plays, and I, and I think that's true about IPFW right now. They, they appear to be ready to play, but they're just their heads coin aren't, aren't in the ball game yet and uh, they've, they've dropped a couple passes they aren't quite ready for things coming at them and they've got to get into this ball game right now. And it was almost as though missing that shot affected her defensive play there because Judy on standing flat footed reached in and drew a foul. Only the fourth team foul against the IPFW so there will not be free throw shot for a while yet by the Lady Norse from Northern Kentucky University. And left wide open on the far left side is number 23. Puts up the jump shot. No good. Val Garkey misses and Robin Scott rebounds as Tina Merrill 
Brings the ball down looking for an offensive move by the Mastodons. There's that little lackadaisical play again. It's yeah, it's uh, everybody's not keeping their eye on the ball right. and, and recognizing what's happening in the in the ball game. Don Harbaugh and Amy Newhouse will return at the guard spots for IPFW. 17-12 at the nine minute, 19 second mark of this first half. I think we've gone about two minutes here, Dave, without scoring either team. Scoring. Either team. And they've each had a couple of good opportunities that just haven't uh, fallen in there. There we see Linda Huntingford taking it strong to the basket. And uh, as we have said, she's a uh, good looking inside ball player. Tina Merrill with the outside three point shot, no good. And it was interesting that time because I saw uh, Linda Huntingford go out and, and uh, box out Tina Merrill from the rebound beyond the three point shot line. And again, Linda Huntingford aggressively inside. And Northern Kentucky has closed this margin now to 17 16. Aggressive defense, as we've said by the Lady Norse from Northern Kentucky, as again Tina Merrill attempts the three point shot. That time, Robin Scott had excellent rebound position, got the ball, and put it back in. IPFW needed that kind of a right. move. The shooting percentage for IPFW has fallen off considerably from the first three minutes, and so yes, you're right. They need to. They started out red hot. Need to be very aware of that backside on the uh, offensive boards, and I think they can pick up some because aggressive, as aggressively as Northern Kentucky is playing uh, defensively, it's going to leave the backside open. That's right. They the ought rim. to be able to go back door if they'll just uh, be aware of it. IPFW inbounds the ball with eight minutes to go here in the first half. 1916 IPFW in the lead Lisa Miller tries the baseline it's cut off Lisa again with the ball on the left side makes a nice move to their left side shot up no good Pam Edwards draws the ball and they foul on the uh, underneath action after the shot was attempted and missed by IPFW they, they need to get Lisa Miller into the offense a little bit more she's she's uh, doing a pretty good job at the defensive end but nobody's really setting any picks for her. And obviously, as we talked uh, Thursday night, uh, every team that we play is not going to look for Lisa Miller, and, and uh, they're very tight on her. So somebody's got to help her get open, and she's got to learn to move well without the ball. Um, every time she starts towards the basket, which is where she scores a lot of her points, there's three people collapsing on her. So somebody's got to be open. And as she did earlier in the game, if she uh, can get that ball off of a pick and, and get that short uh, 12, 14-foot jumper, uh, she can hit that shot, too. Nice pass inside. As Holly Kaufman puts the shot up and draws Northern Kentucky to within one point again. Shelly Sands with the ball, a nice inside pass. Pam Edwards almost took too long to get uh, the shot I off. I thought she was going to pull her back foot there, but uh, she was able to get the ball up. A nice drop off pass by Shelly Sands. Both teams playing a pretty aggressive man for man defense. Pam Edwards has the job of trying to shut that down. Linda Honigford and the inside play of Northern Kentucky. We have a new player in number 14, Melissa Stone for the Norse ladies. Lisa Miller with another rebound. Lisa's had a lot of rebounds again as she did Thursday night. There will be no basket on that move. A nice aggressive move by Amy Newhauser to the basket, but she was fouled prior to her getting the shot off. That's the uh, that's the kind of move uh, and play that Amy Newhauser gave IPFW in the first half on Thursday night, taking the ball to the basket, hitting the short jump shot. And that's the first real attempt uh, she's made towards the basket. So I think she needs to do that too. Now we should be in the one and one, and they uh, look like they're not quite setting up yet. Yep, now they are. Yeah, Amy had uh, a lot of good aggressive moves to the hoop on Thursday night. So Amy Newhouser going to the line. First free throw, I believe, for IPFW tonight. Right. First free throw is around and good. Nice little bounce that time. We'll take it. Second one on its way. And it's good. Melissa Stone. 
for Northern Kentucky. Amy Newhauser creating some difficulty for her. There just is, is no help inside, Dave. When somebody takes the ball to the basket, everybody else just kind of follows their person out and clears the lane to give that person driving lane. We cannot do that. If you notice at the other end of the court defensively, Northern Good. Kentucky does a great job with backside help. There will be help there every time. And that time, uh, Holly Kaufman saw that, that opening to the basket, took it, didn't really have a clear uh, lead on her defender, but enough that she drew the foul. And her free throw is good. Well, and defensively, that's the way you want your player to go inside, not drive the baseline. So you're, you can take it back into your help, but there was no help there. There you see the picture of Kaufman with five, now six points. She converts both free throws. Robin Scott with the ball. Since she is not defended closely, she decides to bring it down and not uh, fight the press. Annie Clevens has been uh, having the defensive assignment on uh, Lisa Miller and has really covered her tightly, almost to the extent of bouncing her around a little bit. Robin Scott almost didn't recognize her opening that time. Some nice movement inside and tight, but uh, couldn't quite get the shot they want. Well, and how many times, David, we talked about it? you're inside tight, you got to get that ball high up on the board because you got a heck of a lot better chance of the ball going yeah. in than if you just try to lay it over the front of the end of the room with all that physical play going on inside. Linda Honigford uh, being able to play down underneath as they have a high post player now in Christy Wegley. IPFW needs an offensive set here that uh, results in a basket. Amy Newhauser with her nice move to the, the hoop and a nice follow by Pam Edwards, who puts the ball back in. Just great aggressive play on both of those players' parts. Uh, nice. I just mentioned a minute ago that Amy Newhauser needed to take that ball down uh, the lane, and uh, Pam Edwards followed up with the, uh, with the missed shot. Keep Honingford right out there. Beyond that three point. There we go. And also, I guess, uh, maybe Christy Wegley. Let those big kids have that ball That's out right. there beyond the three point shot line. Although I have a feeling that uh, Linda Honingford can score. I would imagine she might take that shot. Many plays. Yep. APFW inbounds the ball. Five minutes to go here in the first half, and they have a five point lead. Shelly Sands. Aggressive move inside. Nice move. Didn't quite ball. get the ball up high enough again to give it a chance to fall in. Annie Levens to the basket for the layup. Oh, nice, nice move. Didn't, wouldn't quite fall for her. Excellent move by Amy Newhouser. She just kept right on going. Right. Had that defender on her hip. And again, and the rebound. You saw the great play there. Uh, Aggressive play by Pam Edwards again, and she was fouled by number 21, Christy Freppen, who picks up her third foul. Yeah, that could be a problem for Northern Kentucky because their uh, starting five has had to carry the bulk of the load here in this first half. You're right. There's been very little substitution. Number 14, Melissa Stone, came in a little bit. And number 33 has played a little bit, and number 24 has played a little bit. But uh, by and large, it's been that starting lineup. Pam Edwards hits the first free throw, and we'll get number two. Both teams in the bonus for these last four and a half minutes of play here. Second free throw is up and no good. Came out high, the long rebound. Annie Clevens with the ball, looking inside, comes back outside to Lena Hottenberg. To Stone. Again, a careless, careless uh, exchange that time. We're just not, uh, not taking care of the ball. Right. 
It's almost like we're, we're, we want to get rid of it. Too quickly, yeah. Yep. And there's a mistake, but that's that's one of, uh, uh, she was hustling. It wasn't one where she didn't think about doing the right thing. Just got caught in heavy traffic. 26-22, IPFW in the lead by four. Three minutes and 50 seconds left in the first half of play. Great Lakes Valley basketball. Two pretty evenly matched teams. Annie Blevins out to Val Garkey. Garkey dishes off to Linda Honigford. Dave, she knows how to move inside without the ball, and they're going to get it to does. her. Lisa Miller outside. Might as well uh, take a look at that shot, Lisa. And a nice aggressive move. Nice pass inside by Tina Merrill. And they drew the foul on Linda Honderford. I just, just was thinking, Dave, just on that, before that possession, they need to get Lisa Miller in now. She scored 13 points down at... Uh, Kentucky State the other night, I think she had 11 against Bellarmine, so they really need to get her into the offense. Uh, she's been out of a, sorts a little bit here in the last couple of games. And if everybody's going to play her so tightly, uh, they can't do it with just one player. That's right. Uh, the rest of them should be getting open, get some additional daylight. Lisa's first free throw is good, and she eyes number two, and that's good. Melissa Stone with the ball for Northern Kentucky. Down to the deep corner. Kaufman drives the baseline, stops, puts up a short jumper. That was just poor defense by IPFW. They could not afford to give that baseline up, and they need to use that as an additional defensive player. Shelly Sands, the deep left corner, back out to Don Harbaugh. Into Tina Merrill. Tina drives left side, around and no good. Not necessarily a good choice on Tina's part. I think she was uh, guarded too closely. Still plenty of time left on the shot clock. I'm not sure they shouldn't have worked the ball a little bit harder. We've talked about that before, though, too. It's easy for us to sit up here That's and decide right. what shots to take. The one thing, though, on a lot of those baseline shots, uh, there's not much arch in some of the last shots we've seen IPFW take. And if you get the ball up a little higher, it's got a better opportunity to fall through. Amy Newhauser back in the lineup. She and Tina Manier at the guard spots. Annie Levins drives the baseline. Missed rebound, Lisa Miller. Again, defensively, we're just letting the player with the ball just have too easy access to the lane. That time, Lisa Miller was open on the right side uh, wing, but the pass was a little overextended. And Northern Kentucky with an opportunity here at 2 minutes and 12 seconds to go in the first half to come down and tie this game. Although it's been a tight game, there's only been one tie, and I think that was at 2-2. Two to two. Right. Defense, watch for Huntingford. Good aggressive rebound there by Shelly Sands. Yep, she took control of that one. Tina Manier that time got, uh, again, did not make the kind of pass that Shelly Sands needed to have to be able to handle. Well, that's about three or four passes Tina's made like that tonight. Again, she just is, uh, is just hurrying herself too much, not taking her time. It's almost like we're, we're not confident in the things we can do by moving the ball around and uh, taking the, sh the open shot. We've got to try to get that ball forced inside, and I don't believe that's necessary for this ball club. Well, that time Shelly had the defense uh, pinned back uh, on her right hip, but the pass was made too far for her to have to uh, be able to control it. Now we see a Honig for taking the outside shot. And it appears that number 23, Val Garkey, came down on an ankle and may have twisted there it. You see the bit. replay. There's the Honig for taking. We, th we thought she'd probably take those shots outside. Yeah, it was a good looking outside shot, so it's uh, not like that would be a foreign territory for her. 
The Robin Scott is currently working on uh, defensively. No box out. And number 25, Holly Kaufman, picked up the easy rebound, put the basket in, and we have a tie game at 28-28. And IPFW has been unable to get much of anything going offensively here of late. And a three-pointer, though, by Robin Scott. And that's not one of uh, Robin's uh, more popular places to shoot from. No, Dave, I'm going to try to find the stats here. I don't think she's attempted too many three-pointers. But it she's came at a very opportune time for the Mastodon. Attempted seven. That's her eighth this year. So. And there we had Robin Scott just about a half step behind and on the defense and bounced uh, Linda Honingford away from the pass and drew the foul. So Linda Honingford will go to the line to shoot two. IPFW in the lead, 31-28, with 35 seconds to play here in the first half. Free throw is missed. Considerably short on that shot, Dave. And we'll see now if IPFW works the clock down a bit. Looks like they will uh, attempt to do that because they can take the shot clock just about down to nothing, but they throw the ball away. Well, the pressure defense that uh, Northern Kentucky is putting on here is, is really flustering IPFW. And it surprises me because they've been in tough, tense situations before and they just aren't handling this very well. Now we'll see how well uh, Northern Kentucky can attempt to maybe do the same thing. And they attempt the long three point shot. You got time now for IPFW to get a shot, but they can't uh, handle the ball cleanly. So we come to the end of the first half. IPFW 31, Northern Kentucky 28. A lot of, a lot of fast paced action in those last several minutes, but not a lot of scoring took place. No, in fact, a half. pretty low scoring uh, half, pretty much on target for uh, Northern Kentucky. They're averaging uh, about 74 and giving up about 63, but IPFW is averaging about 84, so way considerably below uh, their average. Well, the defensive intensity here has to have been a factor to uh, help keep this scoring down because Northern Kentucky has played very aggressively and probably has played uh, defensively just a notch stronger than has IPFW. Actually, it's a surprise, Dave, that uh, to me that of Northern Kentucky's record because uh, with knowing they have lost uh, four games in the conference, it surprised me a little bit because they look to be a very, very good ball club. I would expect them to match up very well with St. Joe, who we saw about two weeks ago, but... Uh, let me go down some unofficial scoring statistics here. Uh, leading the IPFW Mastodons, who uh, lead at halftime here 31 to 28. Uh, Robin Scott has nine, and Pam Edwards has seven, and uh, Lisa Miller has six. Shelly Sands with four, Tina Merrill with three, and Amy Newhauser with two for a total of 31. Uh, for 28, for the Northern Kentucky University Lady Norse, they're led in scoring by their leading scorer, Linda Honingford, with 12. And uh, Holly Kaufman has done a really nice job getting a lot of junk baskets, as I call them, underneath the basket with 10 points. Annie Levins has four. Valor Garkey has two. And I think that's it, Dave. That's all the scoring for uh, Northern Kentucky. Yeah, those two inside players have really carried the, the bulk of the load with 22 of the 28 points. Well, it's been a, a good, hard-fought uh, first half here, and we invite you to, during the halftime, stay tuned to enjoy the presentation of a show entitled The IU Update. So we'll see you back here in about uh, 12 minutes for the start of the second half. Enjoy the halftime IU Update. Welcome to another edition of IU Update. I'm Mike Pfeiffer. Indiana University is once again selling GTCs, or Guaranteed Tuition Certificates. GTCs provide an opportunity to get a future college education at today's prices. Eileen Kokosinski, Director of Marketing for GTCs, tells us this program is a unique way to buy into the future. It is the only program in the United States that will return actual paid credit hours. All other programs are a program where you put X number of dollars in today, and so much interest will be returned at a future point in time. Uh, people's budgets with mortgages and expenses pretty much takes away 
large chunks of cash. This is a way for them to buy credit hours whenever there is additional available cash in their budget. Going to college on the installment plan. If you'd like more information about GTCs, you can call this toll-free telephone number, 1-800-858-2600. High school students going on to college next year should be aware of some important approaching deadlines. If you plan to apply for financial aid, be aware that your student financial aid form must be mailed before March 1st. Also, students who will be enrolling as freshmen on the IU Bloomington campus next fall must submit their enrollment applications before February 15th. A small group of Indiana University students will travel to Nicaragua next month as part of a class being offered this semester. The students will help observe the Nicaragua national elections. Professor Jack Hopkins, coordinator of the course, says it is a difficult assignment. Uh, it's, it's not simply a, a, a lark in Central America. It will be, it'll, it'll be hard work. Uh, it's, uh, it has a certain amount of uh, risk connected with it. It has certain expenses on the student's part to go. Uh, living, as you suggest, will be bare bones uh, kind of uh, existence. Uh, we'll live in the homes of people in the community, and we'll probably eat beans and rice for a week or so, and, uh, but we think it'll be worth it. An official of the government of Poland recently paid a visit to the IU Purdue campus at Fort Wayne. During his visit, Senator Andrzej Szalinski asked the community and the campus for help in restructuring economic, social, and political establishments in Poland. Szalinski is Lech Walesa's chief of staff and a member of the Polish parliament. Even though the IU football team did not go to a bowl game this year, the school is being represented in postseason play. Last Saturday, Dave Schnell, Ron Vargo, and Anthony Thompson played in the Japan Bowl in Tokyo. AT was named the game's MVP. This weekend, AT will play in the annual East-West Shrine Bowl out in California. He won't be alone there either. Bill Mallory will be one of the assistant coaches for the East squad. That's all the time we have for in this edition of IU Update. We'll be back in a couple of weeks. I'm Mike Pfeiffer. Competition can get pretty fierce on the playing floor between Indiana and Purdue. But in the classroom, the two universities have become partners in providing quality higher education. The IU Purdue campus at Fort Wayne and the IU PUI campus represent the cooperation of the two schools throughout the state. Tonight, IU President Thomas Ehrlich and Purdue President Stephen Beering discuss the statewide benefits of this unique partnership. Steve, it's a pleasure to welcome you here tonight. You not only brought yourself and your team, you brought some Purdue popcorn, too. Thanks very much. Great to be here. One of the things that I've been struck by since I came to Indiana two and a half years ago, and you welcomed me so warmly, is the partnership between Indiana and Purdue University and how important that partnership is for the entire state. I'm struck by the fact that throughout the state, Indiana University and Purdue University are working together. And the numbers are phenomenal, aren't they? About two-thirds of all the college students in Indiana are enrolled in one of the IU or Purdue campuses. It's very exciting that we have the challenges of the new majority, as you like to call them, the adult students, who comprise 65 to 70 percent of the student population on our community-based campuses. Since there are 40 colleges and universities in this state, I don't think uh, all of us sometimes realize that staggering fact. And the, the other impressive thing is that we're now able to enfranchise those who've been passed by in terms of cultural opportunities and the great emphasis that we're able to give to minority education. Well, it's enormously important for uh, uh, Afro-Americans, for Hispanics, for other minorities to be able to utilize uh, their talents just the way uh, others need to. Both institutions are making special efforts to be sure they can. And it's also important to realize that the state is getting a great bargain. Not only is each individual student getting an education at a very reasonable uh, rate of uh, tuition and fees, but our faculties are able to bring in, through grants and contracts, two dollars for every one that the state invests. That is a, um, a remarkable investment, not just in today, 
but in uh, tomorrow for our children, for our grandchildren, for the future of this state. I'm not sure how many of uh, the Purdue and Indiana University uh, alumni are watching, but I do know that almost 300,000 citizens of this state are alumni of the two institutions and proud of our partnership working together. And there are alumni in every state of the Union, every province of Canada, and, and well over 100 nations throughout the world. It's time now to go back to that ball game. Steve, thanks very much for being with us. It was a pleasure. It's a joy. Thank you. This is the School of Medicine's brand new Medical Research and Library building. This 53,000 square foot building has doubled the amount of space devoted to medical research. Library space, which is an important component in any research effort, has tripled because of this facility. Basically, Dr. Ronald Hoffman is director of the hematology oncology section of the School of Medicine. His department is putting a great deal of effort into the study of such things as leukemia, testicular and breast cancer, bone marrow transplants, and the social and psychological impacts of cancer on patients and their families. We are uh, interested in both uh, understanding the origins of cancer and also developing new treatment modalities, new ways of treating patients with cancer. The uh, cl clinical group headed by Dr. Einhorn and Dr. Williams and Dr. Lair, they perform pioneering work that has resulted in the cure of over 90 percent of patients with one form of cancer, that is germ cell tumors. And that's a, uh, a goal that we would like to uh, accomplish again with other forms of cancer with the work that we're doing here at the School of Medicine. Dr. Joe Christian is chairman of the Department of Medical Genetics. He knows that work being done here will have an impact on the citizens of Indiana as well as other people all around the world. In our department, we're concentrating on diseases of the central nervous system. And these diseases affect individuals at all ages, from mental retardation in the very young to uh, senility and dementia, uh, like Alzheimer's disease in older folks. Many of the things here uh, that are being done on the research laboratory are rapidly uh, going into the field and being applied. We have trained about a hundred medical geneticists that are now located throughout the United States in 18 different countries in the world. Uh, people come here to study from literally all over the world because we are one of the groups that are really, in, we think, in the forefront of applying the rapidly developing knowledge in human genetics. It's been estimated that what we know today in human genetics, half of it will be out of date in 18 months. The Medical Research and Library Building will play a part in expanding knowledge in the field of medicine. It is a tribute to the vision and partnership between the state of Indiana, private enterprise, and higher education. Reporting from Indiana University, this is Mike Pfeiffer.
walked up to the microphone and spoke directly to a standing room only crowd of more than three. Welcome back to the IPFW Athletic Center as we prepare here for the start of the second half as IPFW is about to inbound the ball on the alternate possession. And we are underway with half number two as IPFW leads Northern Kentucky 31 to 28. Ball inside to Robin Scott. Robin gets the baseline move, gets cut off, comes back out. Tina Merrill, short jump shot, no good. Dave Tina, the last three shots now she's missed as she's been taking the ball shot from her waist and kind of shot putting and not getting very good rotation on the ball and the ball has stayed rather flat without too much uh, arc and there we see a foul call against Lisa Miller defensively as IFW gets the first foul of the second half and now we have Northern Kentucky inbounding the ball underneath their own basket and with a new shot clock. Melissa Stone, who uh, came in off the bench in the first half, the point guard, played quite a lot, starts here at the second half for the Norse ladies. Linda Honingford inside, and you know she's going to move. Linda, or uh, Robin Scott with the rebound. Quite a few unforced turnovers by IPFW. And that was one that I think maybe was just a matter of uh, Amy Neuhauser just wasn't quite ready to uh, receive the ball. Take it and go. And there we had the same kind of uh, play by Northern Kentucky. Both teams in a hurry. That that uh, Air Four IPFW was their 11th uh, turnover of the ball game, and again, a number of those were really unforced, in my opinion. There we see the jump shot. Had a little more arc on it that time by, uh, and Robin Scott staying right with it. And on her third attempt, gets it in. Good and, hustle by Robin. And Dave, she had that ball way high on the board that last shot and had a chance for it to come back down, which it did, what we talked about before. Shelly Sands with the rebound on the missed shot by Holly Kaufman. Holly, one of the two that did most of the scoring for Northern Kentucky in that first half. Lisa Miller with the ball, guarded closely by Annie Clevin. Annie doesn't let her out of her sight. That time, Annie got a little over anxious to cut the pass off that was coming toward Lisa Miller. But again, that's a pretty chancy pass for Amy Newhouser to be taking there because there were uh, Annie Levins was behind and uh, Holly Stone was uh, in front. So it was a very tough pass to get get in there to Lisa Miller. Yes, if Annie had not fouled, Northern Kentucky was coming up with the ball. So Lisa Miller will inbound the ball. New shot clock for the IPFW Lady Dons. Quickly inside. And there we have a push foul against number 23, Valerie Garkey. And Dave, that's her third foul. So now they've got two of their big kids in the uh, with three fouls each here early in the second half. One of those is on the bench, Christy Freppen. Freppen. There you see the scoring by IPFW and the number of fouls on each team on the other players. Judy Guess is in the lineup for IPFW, and uh, it would certainly help things if she could get into the offensive flow here, as she can with that outside shooting. Nice move that time by. Uh, Amy well, Newhouse. Melissa Sloan is not very big, Dave, and so Amy Newhouse ought to be able to take her down deep inside and uh, post her up. Linda Honingford way out on the floor. There we see a foul or a travel call as Holly Kaufman got a little anxious in her move to the basket. Number 33, Lori McClellan. It's uh, perhaps the Northern Kentucky coach has the same fear you do, Dan, about uh, taking the little gal down close underneath and posting up. Nice pass inside, and that time Lisa Miller used her body well and drew the foul 
from uh, Annie Levin. But but still, just a little bit too quick on her part. She could have taken her time and had a better uh, shot than, than she got there. Again, nice to draw the foul, but I think she could have drawn the foul and had a, an opportunity for the basket to go in. That foul, Dave, is the third on Annie uh, Levens, and that's their so third they've starter. Got three starters with three fouls, and, and uh, Northern Kentucky calls a timeout here to talk over probably that that very situation. Dave, let's uh, if we got a chance here, let's go over some of the halftime stats, official stats. Um, don't know if we can get this graphic up on the screen or not, but IPFW was uh, 12 of 22 from the field for 55 percent, very good field goal shooting. They were uh, Northern Kentucky was 13 of 32 for 41 percent, not quite a good percent, but they had 10 more shots, 10 more attempts from the field, and that's because they out rebounded offensively. IPFW five to two, and IPFW had uh, 10 more or five more turnovers uh, uh, as compared to uh, Northern Kentucky's five turnovers. The uh, in rebounding, Honingford had four, and Lisa Miller had seven for IPFW. I would have sworn she had more than four re or seven rebounds, but uh, seemed like she was coming out of there about every other time that the ball was uh, put up on the hoop and missed. Yeah, the telling statistic in that first half may very well be those turnovers on IPFW 10, while uh, Northern Kentucky had only five. And Northern Kentucky able to take 10 more shots at the basket. I can't really say IPFW has done a, made a tremendous change from how they were playing in the first half, but they've been able to build a seven point lead here. They just need to keep that rhythm going. Maybe they have applied a little bit more defensive pressure because it appears that the Northern Kentucky has gone a little helter skelter now at this point in the game. Yeah, I think you're right. It's, it may be defensively where the biggest uh, change has come for IPFW because there has not been that inside scoring yet by the Northern Kentucky Norse ladies. First free throw by Lisa Miller is good. She will attempt number two. Nice hustle by Judy Guest. Tips the ball away on the inbound. Just making it difficult to bring the ball up to court. Northern Kentucky looks a little bit down here psychologically, Dave. Uh, after that ball was tipped out of bounds, I was watching the players and they just kind of had their heads down. Nice defensive move that time by Robin Scott. She didn't stop the shot, but she did stop and make uh, Linda Huntingford take a jump shot. Nice pass inside, and there we get some scoring help out of Judy Guess. Well, and we got the ball going down side, down the lane, and that's going to make a big difference. You and I talked about that at halftime off the air that IPFW's got to get that drive down the lane to, uh, to pull the people out, then hit the little five to 10 foot jump shot. And as long as they have their uh, Northern Kentucky's big girls uh, playing out on the perimeter, then they have a much better chance at what's going to be happening here. Lisa Miller pulls down another rebound. Judy Guest feels it now. But Annie Levin chases down the rebound. Lori McClellan had passed down deep in the corner to Holly Kaufman, and Holly shuffled the feet just a bit. And traveling is called turnover Northern Kentucky. So now Northern Kentucky is beginning to get into the turnover. And it habit. looks like they're going to try to uh, force things here a little bit by applying a little full court pressure. They had started the game out that way and backed off a little bit. Robin Scott with the ball, not seeing uh, she could take a jumper. Maybe that's a little out of range. She's hit her one three pointer for the night, maybe. Well, she looks this time and sees, okay, give it to me and I'll just put it in. Dave Robin Scott has had two great games here, the last two efforts out. She had 27 points on Thursday night against Bellarmine, and she's got 13 tonight to lead the, the Lady Don. Not a very smart foul by Amy Newhouser there. No, nope, she he had the back uh, position. The Northern Kentucky player Christy Freppen had was all alone with the inside position, got the ball and was easily going to score. And Amy may or may not have made contact, but uh, even going after her at all. So an opportunity for the three-point play here and to cut the lead back to ten as Christy Freppen attempts the free throw. 
and it is good. Well, the defensively, they've made uh, Northern Kentucky take some poor shots and uh, made a miss. So they need to keep working hard at getting defensive uh, rebounding position. Shelly Sands with the ball down on the baseline. Good move by Shelly. Nice basket. She hit two of those early in the first half to uh, get the run started for IPFW. If she can hit a couple here in the second half to keep that run going. Well, if there can be some scoring threat out of uh, Shelly and out of Judy Guest and some others, then that makes the entire lineup out there uh, potent. But Linda Honeyford rebounds the ball and puts it back in. Well, and again, Dave, the IPFW defense made them take a terrible shot, and they just aren't working hard to get the defensive rebound. You can't afford to give up a second offensive easy shot. Judy Guess with the three point. Uh, and uh, Lisa Miller that time, I think, was a little off balance, surprised that she wasn't bounced, right. and that came out real short on the shot. Ten point lead. 14 and a half minutes to play here in the second half. And that time, uh, Robin Scott made a nice defensive move. Amy Newhauser aggressively to the basket. Drew the foul, and we'll have two free throws. Here's a good uh, picture of the sophomore from Leo. First free throw is good. <laughs> Tina Merrill and Ham Edwards have entered the IPFW lineup. Second free throw is also good. And Dawn Harbaugh comes in to give Amy a short rest. Defensive pressure, full court, applied by IPFW. Annie Levens wanting to bring the ball down by herself, asking for everybody else to clear it. Judy Guest staying right with her. Judy with the quick hands. Annie says, I'm going to go to the hoop. She dishes off. And no defense to step in and. No, none at all. Some of the Northern Kentucky crowd wanted traveling there, but I think maybe Tina was able to keep the one foot planted as she was uh, about to lose her balance. And there we see a turnover. That time it may have been a matter of Pam Edwards not coming to meet the pass. Linda Huntingford just wants to go to the basket, and you know she's going to go for it. Judy Guest ties her up underneath. Alternate possession will go to Northern Kentucky, but at least there was no easy shot taken inside. No, but Dave, Northern Kentucky is, is, is getting almost two shots every possession if they miss the first attempt. And they're clearly the more active team on the floor at the moment. Right. Both ends of the floor. So with a new shot clock, Annie Clevens, top of the key, setting up the offense, which for the most part, hopes to be able to get inside. But there we see the baseline jumper, but no rebound position. Judy Guess uh, had it taken away. And finally, IPFW gets its hands on the ball. Well, and it, it's almost Dave as if they think they just by standing there, they can get the ball. They're not boxing out. Well, as we've said, Northern Kentucky is the most active team on both ends of the floor right now. And that time, the, the young lady, number 23, Val Garkey stole the ball and just blew past us all here at the midcourt. Judy Guest goes strong to the, the basket and drew the foul against Linda Honingford. I'm not sure how many fouls that that's, is on Linda. That's but three, so now they have four players with three fouls. But they're inside uh, 13 minutes here to play. Either both teams are very tired, Dave, or uh, there's just been a couple of mental lapses. Uh, Northern Kentucky, when... Uh, Number 23, Val Garkey intercepted that pass and went the full length of the court. Didn't appear IPFW was really hustling to get back. Same way going back the other end of the court with Northern Kentucky. When uh, Judy Guest got that ball and stepped in front, uh, they appeared content to foul and not to uh, 
try to play defense. Judy's first free throw is good, and it looks like Judy hurt her left hand. For some reason, she's uh, favoring that a good bit. We'll see here if uh, maybe it's a jammed finger. She didn't let it hurt her uh, attempt to shoot the free throw. She may have gone down on that foul. She got hammered pretty good. I didn't uh, see the end of the play to see if she went down on that hand or not, but well, you're right, she's going out. Yeah, so they're examining that left hand to see what might uh, be the problem here. Looks like she's saying it got bent backwards. Okay, Northern Kentucky on the attack offensively. Aggressive move to the hoop by Val Garkey, and she gets two. IPFW not gonna... doing a very good job of protecting the ball either, Dave. They uh, pick it up and. Uh... And our Northern Kentucky drew the foul. Uh, they weren't real pleased with the call, but I think maybe anytime you can get it, try to get it. A tie up from behind the player, you're you're in jeopardy of having a foul call. Well, and they called it on Garkey, and that's her fourth, Dave. Pam Edwards with the rebound, puts it back up, no good. And there we have a jump ball, and this time alternate possession will go to IPFW. Northern Kentucky very aggressive at the moment and disappointed uh, when Ivory Call doesn't go their way, but that they're playing, they're playing really tough right now. That's right, Dave. They're not letting IPFW put them away. One dribble and they pick up the ball and you're just gonna get in an awful lot of trouble that way, Dave. Nice move by Pam Edwards, but didn't get the ball up high enough on the glass to give it a chance to go in. Made the nice fake, the nice move. Northern Kentucky takes the shot, draws a foul. Maybe after the shot, I'm not sure. I think Coach Rosinski needs to take a time out here and talk to her players a little bit. They're just, uh, again, a little lackadaisical here doing some things, Dave. Two shot foul coming up. Ought to be a coach, Dave. Ah, uh, yes. No, I think right now IPFW has not is not playing very well. Um, they're not doing the things defensively they need to do, nor are they doing the offense. We've talked about Lisa Miller needing to take that shot, but I'm not sure that last attempt she made was uh, was very good timing. Um, a little bit behind the backboard, it was right. a tough shot. And she needs to, you know, the ball needs to be rotated a couple times. And, and again, I'm not afraid of her taking that shot. I'm not saying that, but uh, I just think that she needs to to uh, make sure that the ball has rotated a couple times before she hits that shot. There you see the score, IPFW in the lead, eight points, 47-39, as we have 11 minutes and 41 seconds yet to play. Our next live telecast will be on Saturday, March 3rd at 5 p.m. when the Lady Eagles from Ashland University meet the IPFW Lady Dons. And then at 8 p.m., the Ashland University Eagles men's basketball team challenge the IPFW Mastodons. Catch all the action of college basketball right here on your college access Channel 6. Dave, I think the maturity level is uh, is starting to show for IPFW. We've seen it a number of times for them. They they really don't put a team away. They won by 20 points the other night against Bellarmine, but it was uh, a little misleading in my opinion because it was a very close game right up to three minutes to go. And, and it was and very late in the game. A number right. of free throws at the end helped to expand that, that lead, but uh, They've got to learn that they've got to play 40 minutes of the ball game here and come on and do it. They they increased it to 12 points here to start the second half, and now they're giving uh, Northern Kentucky a chance to cut it back to six. Well, one of Northern's mainstays, Holly Kaufman, is at the free throw line here. Shoots the first free throw good. She has a second one coming now, and they have whittled that lead down to seven. Second free throw, no good, and rebound Pam Edwards. Now we need to see some good offensive movement here by the Mastodons. Shelly Sands with the ball out high, down to Lisa Miller. Amy Newhauser into the lane. Shot clock about to go. Somebody's got to recognize it and put it up. <laughs> Well,
Well, if the uh, travel hadn't gotten them, the shot clock would have. Yep. Again, we're still not seeing many picks uh, no. in the IPFW offense, so it's uh, no one's being able to get sh uh, shake loose from that very, very sticky man-to-man -man defense. Then the Honingford out high kicks back out to Annie Blevins. Blevins and Lori McClellan at the guard spot. One thing we have not seen yet, and that is uh, Northern Kentucky taking those three pointers, but they certainly do get that ball inside. Well, and that's and that's smart on their part, Dave, because IPFW is not getting a lot of backside help, so it's going to basically be a one-on-one -on -one play inside there. And most of the times, the uh, offense will win that battle. That time we had uh, Lisa Miller wide open down on the left uh, side court. No defender near her, and we're not able to recognize and pick it up. But Amy Newhauser makes a move, gets fouled, and needs to be able to cash in here on the free throws. And because, Dave, you mentioned that IPFW is not setting a lot of picks, it makes it easy for Northern Kentucky to fight through those, uh, those picks, and, and they're and doing a very good it. job of staying with yep. their players. Amy Newhauser with six points. First free throw is good. There you see Amy as she is about to attempt her second free throw. And that is good. Tina Merrill checking into the IPFW lineup for Shelly Sands. You know, we talked about getting Lisa Miller into the offense. I think uh, Tina Merrill's been averaging about uh, three three-pointers made a game, and she didn't make any, I don't believe, on uh, Thursday night, and she only has one hitter tonight, so we need to get her into that offense if, indeed, uh, they're going to pack it inside tight. There we have the uh, offensive charge called against number 21, Christy Freppen, and that may be number four on Christy. That is, Dave. With uh, 10 minutes and 19 seconds yet to be played here in the second half. And Christie staying in the game at the midway point of the second half. Dangerous pass there by Lisa Miller to uh, Amy Newhauser. And Tina Merrill with her first three-pointer of the night. And that's a big bucket. It stretches the lead back to 10. Now we've got to pick up the intensity here on the defensive end. And shut down that inside play of the Lady Norse. And there we got the good backside help. And, and, we and it was effective. That's right. And, and uh, Pam Edwards did a good job aggressively going to the boards. And that time uh, a rather dumb foul, I guess I would say. Uh, too bad Annie Clevin Levens. And that's her fourth, Dave. That makes it even dumber. Yes. They need her in this ball game. She's the one that's picked up defensively on Lisa Miller all night long. So this may be a good time now to keep that ball in Lisa Miller's hand and go right at Levens and see what happens. Although she'll probably come out of the ball game here. As we see the first free throw, no good by uh, Amy Newhauser. Two substitutions waiting to come in for Northern Kentucky and uh, very quickly, nice alert pass inside and Northern Kentucky gets the fast break basket. And there we have, before they can get her out of the ball game, I think Annie Levins has drawn foul number five. In a kind of a uh, desperation foul, I think she was a little bit frustrated. Uh, desperation, if not frustration. Right. And Coach Wenzel is holding her head, knowing exactly what happened. And you're right, Dave. Uh, I think they had the uh, player at the, at the scorer's table to report in. Okay, we have number 34 in the lineup. Guyana Wanas in for uh, the fouled out Annie Levens. And that may very well be a big factor here with nine and a half minutes to go. We'll see who draws the defensive assignment against Lisa Miller now. But Amy Newhauser comes up short. Pam uh, Edwards with a big rebound and puts the ball back in. New player, first time in the lineup, and uh, Amy Newhauser is giving her lots of difficulty in terms of 
It should have been a five second, I would think, defensive call. She made no progress. But Holly Kaufman hits the two. Ball across. Now we set up. IPFW looking for an offensive set here where they can rotate the ball. Northern Kentucky picks up the rather errant bobbled ball. Well, I think Robin Scott had a good idea there to drive down the middle. She just couldn't get keep control of the ball. Holly Kaufman is a uh, nice dish off into Linda Honigford. And all of a sudden, 10 goes down to 6 in terms of the lead. IPFW 54, IPFW 46, or uh, Northern Kentucky 48. Now we get back to Pam Edwards getting another basket. Nice pass from Amy Newhouser. Well, I think the big people inside for Northern Kentucky are getting a little bit uh, weary, Dave, and they're having trouble getting back down the court. So if IPFW can push it down, uh, they're going to be able to pick up some baskets inside. But there you see IPFW breaking down in the middle. And that was by uh, a guard that has just come into the game and, and is not really that fast. So it was more a defensive lapse than anything else. <laughs> and that was just a terrible pass by IPFW, Dave. And we'll have the alternate possession giving the ball back to Northern Kentucky. <clears throat> Seven minutes and 45 seconds yet to be played. And IPFW with a 56-50 lead. And two new substitutions in for Northern Kentucky. Number 14, Melissa Stone. And Melissa did a pretty nice job for them uh, as a point guard earlier in the game. Right. In fact, she started the second half, didn't she, as she came out? Yeah. Oh, what a bounce. What a bounce. And the press here, uh, the trap press, giving IPFW fits, and it really shouldn't be that bad. Pam Edwards gets the ball across. Now they set up. Don Harbaugh in. What that does, though, Dave, is it takes about uh, one-third of the time, uh, shot clock away from yep. IPFW to run their offense. Right now it's down to 10 seconds. And we have a turnover. Lisa Miller will come back into the IPFW lineup. And I think it will be important that Lisa get into this offensive uh, setup for the Mastodons. Because things are getting a little shaky at That's the moment. 56-52, right. seven minutes to play in the game. And good defense that time by Lisa Miller as she tipped the pass away. Now we'll see what kind of an offensive setup we can get for the Mastodon. See, we can't get a bucket out of this possession. And there, <laughs> we won't. And Linda Honingford is going to draw a foul here. Great, great, great defensive hustle by Robin Scott. And uh, was as Linda Honinger, Honingford tried to recover, was not able to regain her balance and pushed uh, Robin out of bounds, so she'll be shooting a one and one day. But again, IPFW is not getting much out of their guards. Tina Meniere's made a, a number of unforced turnovers. Uh, Don Harbaugh's made a number of unforced turnovers, and it's basically in the passing game. And, I, yes. and you can't put all the blame on the passers. The, uh, the uh, receivers have got to come back and meet the ball. They're not doing that very well either, but uh, we're just not being very smart with our uh, offensive play right now. And both teams are showing a considerable amount of fatigue for some reason or other. Well, I think yeah, you play Thursday, s Saturday night every week. Uh, it starts to take its toll, I think, and yeah. maybe that's what we're seeing tonight. Robin Scott with two big free throws. She'll be replaced now with by Pam Edwards. Dave, she hasn't missed a free throw tonight. I'm not sure how many she's taken, but uh, Thursday night she was 13 for 13, so she's got quite a streak going here. 58-52 with six and a half minutes to play. And IPFW clinging to the lead. And we see a three-pointer by Melissa Stone. It cuts the lead in half. You 
Inbounds pass down court to Lisa Miller. And Lisa is shoved from behind by Melissa Stone. And will go to the free throw line. IPFW only has three fouls here late in the second half. And uh, that means that they'll have a number of fouls to give and if indeed it stays this close and they need to uh, keep uh, Northern Kentucky off the foul line and uh, shooting. There you see a good picture of Lisa Miller, the sophomore from Bishop Boinger High School. First free throw is good. A little shoving there on the left side of the lane for the rebound position. 22 and 22 talking to each other as Lisa Miller eyes the second free throw and it's good. Defense may be the key down here, it's Dan, definitely for be the key, Dave. IPFW to uh, shut out that inside game of Northern Kentucky. Don't believe three points going to be a big, big factor uh, from the Norse ladies. But that rebound, an easy position back inside, is... Uh, it's just killed IPFW here in the second half. They could have a 20-point lead if they weren't giving uh, Northern Kentucky that second effort. Again, we don't have those statistics, but I'll bet second point, uh, second attempt points are. Uh, and a nice jump shot from the right side by Lisa Miller. And as we had hoped, uh, Lisa's getting into the offense now. Well, and that was a little better shot than the one she missed before by 12, 15 feet, and because the ball was rotated to her side and the defense was still trying to recover. Well, I think there's two numbers inside that IPFW should be looking for all the time now in those black jerseys, 25 and 22. And just don't ever lose sight of them, but there is 22. Well, and IPFW is playing a, a zone defense, and so they've got to recognize that they've got to find a person and box that person out immediately upon uh, Northern Kentucky taking a shot. And Lisa Miller left all alone underneath, and it will not fall. She didn't get it up high enough on the board. Shot rather quickly. Lisa looks a little tired. Right. Oh my, <laughs> the ball was blocked and they came right back to her and she just pushed it toward the basket and it goes in. There's not much you can do about that. And there we have Lisa Miller going to the basket as IPFW's lead is down to one, Dan, and it's, uh, things are going right for Northern Kentucky. We have to admit that. Yeah, and not going right for IPFW. They're doing the right things. They're getting the shots they want, I believe, Dave. And and uh, probably playing pretty good defense, yeah. except for the fact that they're not bouncing out at the defensive end. But uh, they are not, just like that shot that Lisa Miller hit a minute ago. She'd take that shot 100 times and hit 99 of them, yeah. and she misses it tonight. Well, she'll be shooting the one and one here. First free throw, no good, no good. Northern Kentucky with a chance now to take the lead. And it would be their first lead in a long, long time. <laughs> and they do as number 33, Lori McClellan. It's the short jumper from the right side. Robin Scott with the ball. Four minutes, uh, over four minutes to play, so a lot of time left. Uh, and neither team should feel like uh, it's desperation time. Robin Scott with a jump shot from the right side. So she retakes, uh, gives IPFW the lead again at 64 63. Great facing shot, Dave. A lot of pressure on the junior to take that shot right there. Well, she's stepped forward and done a nice job tonight. Tina Manier. Playing very tight defense, and, and Robin Scott stepped into the passing lane and uh, slowed it down enough that Lisa Miller could tie up Linda Honingford and on the alternate possession, the out of bounds will be to IPFW. Well, and this is a key key possession, Dave. Uh, you mentioned one earlier tonight, and this I think is one too. They're up by one with 3.42 left, but they need to execute here and get a basket. Tina Manier back into the lineup. Yeah, it's important here that uh, IPFW handle the ball well, set their offense up, get the movement, and come out with uh, the kind of opportunity to score that they'd like to have. There we had a nice block out inside. Robin Scott with the ball back over to Shelly Sands. Tina Manier, or Tina Merrill, 
with the move down the lane. And Tina draws the foul. Dave, this Northern Kentucky uh, women's team reminds me an awful lot of the IPW men's team. They uh, play very aggressively. They pick up a lot of uh, hack fouls. Um, again, I don't think they're dirty. I think they're just trying to steal the ball and uh, pry a lot of uh, pressure. And, they're and, just and you always, pick up those. That's right. Always in your hip pocket. Difference may be they do it with fewer players. That's right. And, that, and that's going to hurt them, I think, down the long run. They picked up a number of fouls here. In fact, uh, that foul went to number 23. I thought it was 33. And that's going to be uh, her fifth. Yes. So that's two players that have fouled out now for Northern Kentucky. Right, Andy Levins went out earlier with a total of four points, but played a great defensive game on Lisa Miller. Well, the two key players obviously have been Linda Honingford and uh, Holly Kaufman in that inside game for Northern Kentucky. I think they both have four fouls, perhaps. Uh, the guard, the guard play, uh, may be the critical factor for Northern Kentucky. Well, we at IPFW are pleased to bring you Cablecast of athletic competition. We hope you enjoy the game and excitement of intercollegiate sports at IPFW. To provide such programs, we need your support with the help of student workers and volunteers. We are able to produce these programs at a relatively low cost. Your contribution will help to defray the production costs not covered by the university budget. College Cable Access at IPFW invites you to invest in the quality college programming by sending your contribution to the following. College Cable Access Center, IPFW, 2101 Coliseum Boulevard East, Fort Wayne, Indiana, 46805-1499. Please make your check out to the Indiana Purdue Foundation at Fort Wayne and designate it for college athletics. Three, three minutes and 21 seconds left, yep. Dave. Didn't mean to interrupt you there, but uh, crucial, crucial part of the ball game. And IPFW is uh, going to have two free throws here. They can move up to a three-point lead. Uh, a moment ago, they missed a, the front end of a one-and-one, -one, and Amy Newhauser missed the uh, front end of a one-and-one -one earlier. So uh, after hitting a string of free throws, they've uh, not been able to convert here late in the game, and it's going to be important that they step up here right now. Well, there has to be a bit of a fatigue factor because the way they typically shoot their free throws, those uh, would normally be going in. So Tina Merrill the first and it's no good Tina will have a second opportunity Lisa Miller in Shelly Sands out second free throw by Tina Merrill is good gives IPFW a two point lead and now defensively they need to play very sharply so that they can and there will be no basket with the foul on the floor. If this uh, was the NBA, they'd count that, but uh, yeah. no, she was fouled much before the shot. And that may be a break for IPFW because in the, unless the young lady can hit both free throws, and it's uh, not a shooting foul, so there'll be no free throws. Defense. Defense, very important here at this stage of the game. Well, and that was definitely a defensive breakdown there by IPFW. Ball's getting inside almost every at will. attempt. That's right. The recognition has to be there because Northern Kentucky's bringing their players out on the perimeter and breaking them in and, and coming down to the, uh, to the weak side. Big rebound by Robin Scott as IPFW has the ball on a two-point lead and a move to the basket, and Lisa Miller finally gets one to fall yep. in there. But even that one, Dave, she didn't put up very high on the board. She was able to get the lucky roll because it just rolled over the rim. It was a crawler. But a big, big basket for IPFW. Now, if Lisa can hit it this really free throw, move them back out to a five-point lead. Still plenty of time in this ballgame for both teams, but uh, IPFW appears to uh, have things at least in their favor right now. And Lisa hits the free throw. So a five-point lead, 68-63. Just under three minutes of playing time left. Melissa Stone brings the ball up for Northern Kentucky. And I think IPFW has now gone man-to-man -man defense so that they can keep a better track of those players uh, getting the inside position on them and getting free. Which is a pretty good idea. Typically, you want to use so. a, a zone when the uh, other team is a shooting team outside, and Northern Kentucky has not shown that. Robin Scott with another big rebound, pulled down as the shot clock was dwindling down. Good defense that time by the Mastodons. Very good. That was a good change of uh, coaching to uh, change that defense up. 
Now it looks like IPFW will be content to use a little bit of that clock and keep the ball in the hands of people who are good free throw shooters. And there we have a blocking foul called against Linda Huntingford. If that's her fifth, that will be a very, very critical uh, play. And that is her fifth. She leaves Dave with 18 points and a very, very good game inside. She's a she's a competitor. quality player. Thank goodness this is the last time we'll have to see her here. That's right. She's a competitor. There was uh, some exchanges with the uh, between players all night long, but I think uh, just heated ex exchanges and nothing that uh, wasn't in the good competitive spirit. Robin Scott to the free throw line. To shoot the one and one. First free throw is good. Robin will have a second attempt. And it's also good. Another tremendous performance by Robin Scott. Well, that gives her 19 points, Dave, to uh, compliment her or 27 against uh, Bellarmine the other night. That's got to give her a shot at Player of the Week, although we saw in the paper tonight where Linda Yeoman scored 51. It's uh, from St. Joe. Rebound that time by Tina Merrill. IPFW getting the rebounds here of late. Well, this is kind of reminiscent of the uh, Bellarmine game the other night, Dave, with three minutes to go. A very close ball game with uh, three minutes to go tonight. Very close ball game. IPFW's moved out to a seven-point lead. And again, a little carelessness on the part of IPFW. They don't need to foul here. Melissa Stone with a key steal on the defense takes it on down, draws the foul and an opportunity to score uh, at the free throw line. I think they'll call that in the act of shooting. Otherwise, they would not yet be in the one and one, which is probably uh, in a way that the lax defense for IPFW has kept them out of foul trouble. Right. Uh, if you can look for a positive factor to some lax defense. First free throw is good by Melissa Stone. Melissa's a mighty might, you might say. Uh, she's made a nice contribution to this team tonight. They, they list her as a uh, only five foot, and I would guess she's uh, pushing that. If, uh, if four, it, four foot uh, eleven, yeah, maybe. Right. <laughs> and she hits both free throws. 70-65. Minute and a half to play. This is not over. Amy Newhauser with the ball. Number 20, Libby Moses, just into the lineup for Northern Kentucky, and good move by Pam Edwards as she kicks the ball back outside. Gives it to Don Harbaugh in the middle. Amy Newhauser down the lane and hits that 12-foot uh, jumper. Great shot. Great basket right there, 72-65. I didn't see how far down the shot clock was, but they had worked it a good bit. Well, and they're making Northern Kentucky work at their end of the court, too, which they've got to do. They've got to get them to take some time off the clock, too. An excellent move that time by Robin Scott uh, because the one player on the floor that you know they'll be going to now, if they can at all possible, is number 25, Holly. Kaufman and Robin tipped the pass away from Holly that time. Lisa Merrill or Lisa Miller with the rebound. Robin Scott down and kicks off to Lisa Miller. Well, and since Northern's lost their big girls, they don't have that second shot attempt uh, that they were getting earlier. Right. And which got them back in the ball game. Well, as we had suspected, uh, the depth or lack of depth for Northern Kentucky has become a factor because as players began to foul out, they did not have uh, even close to the same kind of, of caliber player to bring back into the lineup. Well, there's going to be an awful large foul discrepancy tonight's game, Dave. Uh, we've criticized the officials a number of times earlier in our broadcast, but tonight uh, it's certainly going IPFW's way. I'm not sure uh, emotionally that I'm feeling they were, uh, were cheated but uh, it certainly is nice that uh, we're getting the advantage yeah. tonight that way. 30 seconds to play and a nine point lead for IPFW. Desperation shot put up and missed by Northern Kentucky. And as Amy Newhouser came out with the ball, she draws the foul against Melissa Stone. And we'll have another player foul out for the Northern Kentucky 
Lady Norse. Dave, and that is uh, the fourth player to foul out, and Melissa Sloan, who uh, came in in a substitution role, who has played a considerable amount, has four fouls, so they have a number, number of fouls. Well, the player that just went out, uh, Christy Freppen, played a long time with her fourth foul. First free throw is good by Amy Neuhauser. And we're going to have a uh, what might look like a comfortable margin when the game ends, but it was anything but comfortable uh, just a couple of minutes ago. 76 65 11th point spread now by the IPFW Mastodons easy pass down inside may have uh, been a little extra scuffle they quickly get the ball down to Robin Scott Melissa Stone draws another foul and she will foul out now that's a fifth uh, player to be disqualified Credit the Northern Kentucky Lady Norse with uh, a really scrappy performance here tonight. Uh, right from their tallest player, Linda Huntingford, down to their shortest player, Melissa Stone. And you're right, IPFW will shoot a lot of free throws. But uh, most of these fouls here lately have been just of the desperation type. They really haven't been a factor in the lead in the ball game. No, it's been uh, it's going to let's look at the positive side. Of this is going to be a great Robin uh, Scott missed a free throw. Right. Can you believe that? And yeah. Northern Kentucky turns the ball. And over. I think that was about 18 or 19 in a row for Robin uh, between this game and last game. Well, that takes the pressure off. Right. Didn't need that one anyway. But this wins a big one for IPFW day because yes, as we talked earlier, this uh, keeps them in third place and uh, it's going to be very hard for them to overtake uh, Bellarmine for second. But that but third still place have a shot at that's it. That's right. Pam Edwards misses the first shot, puts the second one back up and in, and at the buzzer, we have a final score of 78 to 65. IPFW women's basketball team, a winner here, and solidifies their hold on third place in the Great Lakes Valley Conference and keeps alive their pursuit of second place and perhaps some postseason play with some regional rankings. Well, Dan, a, another excellent performance here uh, in, in terms of uh, determination and, and staying with the game, uh, never letting it get away, although having it uh, appear to be on the brink a few times. Uh, the Lady Mastodons hung in there and come up with a 78-65 lead. Well, I think, again, a young team like IPFW has got to learn to, uh, they've got to play 40 minutes, and that may be the uh, downfall of this team uh, in the future. But... Certainly off to a very good start here towards this uh, final run. Now they've got three more games left in the season. They go on the road next weekend to play two of the teams at the bottom level of the conference in Southern Indiana on Thursday night and Kentucky Wesleyan on Saturday night. Then they come home to play Ashland the following Saturday night. So uh, if they can win those three, they'll have a, a, a marvelous uh, non-conference or total record of 22 and 6 and a conference record of uh, uh, 14 and 4. So putting themselves in a position to uh, to get an NCAA bid. That's what they've got to do. And then, then it's up to the deciders uh, who makes those big decisions. But, Dave, let me go down the uh, unofficial scoring for the victorious Lady Nons with a total of 78 points. They were led in scoring tonight by Robin Scott, who led them on Thursday night. Robin had 19, uh, 19 points tonight and a number of big, big defensive rebounds late in the ballgame tonight. She was uh, assisted very ably by Lisa Miller with 15, Amy Newhauser with 14, and Pam Edwards with 13, so four players in double figures. Then Judy Guest had four. Tina Merrill had seven. Uh, Shelly Sands had six for a total of uh, 78 points. For the losing team tonight, the Lady Norse of Northern Kentucky, they were led in scoring by their leading scorer and their senior, Linda Honingford, with 18 before she fouled out. But she didn't get much help, Dave. Uh, only one other player in double figures, and they actually had five players averaging in double figures. Tonight, Holly Kaufman had 15. Then they had... Uh, Christy Freppen with nine, Valid Gurky with eight, Melissa Sloan with five, Annie Levins with four, and Lori McClellan with four, and Guyana Wonhas with two for a total of 65 points. Well, this reminder, uh, our next live telecast.